Over the past few weeks, I've been completely changing our dark, messy basement to make it an awesome hangout for our entire family. I painted a huge striped mural on the wall. I added a ton of recessed lighting. I even made the ping pong table fold in half so it can be smaller. But now that it's well lit and clean, today we're gonna make it awesome. In case you've missed the last couple of videos, I've been working very hard on my basement. First, I removed a whole bunch of junk, then I added recessed lighting around the entire space to light it up. Then I added a striped mural going all along this wall and up the stairs. Then I took my ping pong table and made it into a transformer, so when we want, we can have a half-size gaming table. So today we're gonna completely finish this space. Now the entire point here is to make a place in our house that is just to spend time together. It's just to hang out, play games, watch movies, stuff like that. And we wanna have a place for our kids to hang out with their friends in our house. So to wrap this entire thing up, I've got a pretty big list of stuff to do. The first thing we have to do in the room is actually fix the walls. There's a big hole in the drywall that I made, so we're gonna patch that, and then we're gonna just patch a bunch of holes, add some fresh paint all around. Then we've got some AC ducting that runs across the ceiling of the room, and we need to cover that up both for the looks and to protect the ducting from the kids. And of course, I asked my kids what they wanted in this space, and that led to some RGB LEDs around the whole thing, a fold-down screen, a projector, a new couch. So we've got a lot of things to do, but we can't do any of it until we fix the wall. Now there's a good chance that you didn't see this video, but this picture actually has a puzzle built into the backside of it, and you have to blindly move the picture around to solve the puzzle to get it off the wall. And if you do it wrong, it sets off a siren. It's funny and cool, but it's gotta go. So the batteries are dead, and the key that acts as a failsafe, I have no idea where it is. I kind of feel like it's probably inside the safe, which is a terrible place for it. So I guess we have to crack the safe? Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what the ethics are about teaching people how to break into a safe, but it is my safe. So I'm gonna break into it and maybe just not show you all the details. Either way, I gotta get it out of the wall. Okay, so the good news is the key was not in the safe. The bad news is it doesn't matter because now I've completely ruined the safe, but at least I can get it out of the wall. That's out of the way, so now we can actually patch the wall. Now, if you're working on an interior wall, you have fewer steps, but this is an exterior wall, so I've got a couple of extra things I have to do first before we get to the drywall. On the other side of this wall is brick. And so to keep the outside out and the inside in, I need to put back the insulation and vapor barrier that I removed when I put in the safe. Now that's not hard to do. I can just put some insulation back in place, but the vapor barrier needs to be attached to something. So I'm gonna have to cut away a little bit more drywall to put the plastic on top of that before we can actually patch it. All right, that was pretty easy. I just stapled the plastic to the front of the studs and I tucked it up and overlapped it with the plastic at the top and the bottom. I think ideally you'd want some tape there, but I'm gonna leave it as it is. Next, we need to cut a piece of drywall to fit in here and there's a kind of cool way to do that. I believe this is called a California patch, but here's what you do. Measure the hole that you're trying to fill. Then you wanna add an inch and a half to all four sides. So add three inches to your width, three inches to your height, and then cut out a piece that fits that size. Once you've got that piece cut, flip it over so you're looking at the brown side, and then mark in an inch and a half on all four sides and score it. You're gonna be breaking through the brown paper with the score line. And then you wanna break the drywall along those scores. From there, you wanna gently pull away the drywall from the front paper, leaving the front paper behind, and you end up with something like this. You have a chunk of drywall that will fill the hole, but then an overlap on each side. Hopefully yours will look better than mine, but honestly, this is just a starting point. We're gonna put it in place and add lots of mud and sand it until you can't even tell it's there. Now you take some joint compound and you put a little stripe all the way around it that's gonna overlap where your paper goes. Now you take your patch and you fit it in the hole. Then you use your knife to start working from the inside out to press that little flap down.
after that first coat dries, then you take more drywall mud, you cover the seams, you sand it down, and you just keep doing that until you get a nice smooth finish. Now, I'm the first one to say, I don't like doing drywall. And I think that's partially because I feel like it takes me three or four times as long to get a smooth finish as it does everybody else. I just have to do a lot of coats to get there. And I'm only telling you that to encourage you if that's the case for you as well. So I'm not gonna make you watch me finish this, but just trust me, there's gonna be a lot of sanding. I just sanded the second coat on that and it's almost ready for paint, so that's pretty awesome. But next up, we need to fix that. We've got this AC ducting that runs across the room and it didn't look terrible to begin with, it was, it was all right. But then we added a gas line when I redid the kitchen and that made it really ugly and the yellow line just sticks out. So I wanna cover it up. And there's a bunch of different ways to do this. A lot of people will just build a frame around it connected to the ceiling and then drywall over it. You can get a nice finished look, it hides all of it and you never have to worry about it again. And that's probably a perfectly fine way to do it, but in my case, I can't do drywall. I mean, I guess I could, but I don't really want to. And there's two reasons for that. One, I kind of just feel like I should be able to get to it. In case I ever need to fix something, access it somehow, I just want to be able to get to it without tearing out some drywall. And the other more realistic thing is that I actually want to run some wiring through there that's not going to be permanent wiring. Specifically, we're going to put a projector hanging from the ceiling right there. And so I need to connect an HDMI cable to that and run it across the room, hidden in this thing, and then down to the source. And as long as I have access to that from each end, then I can run whatever wires I need to in the future. So instead of drywall, my plan is to use paneling on a really basic frame as simple as possible. So in case we need to get into it, we can just unscrew some panels and do what we need to do. And the first step is to add a ledger to the ceiling. I've got a laser level running across the room parallel to all the stuff that I'm gonna connect to. And so now I just have to find the studs or the joists up there so that I can screw into them. Luckily, I can actually see most of the joists up here. And the ones that I can't see, I'll find with a stud finder. For this ledger, we're gonna use a two by two. This is gonna be plenty strong enough for this, but it is still kind of a thin piece of wood. So we're gonna pre-drill all the holes and then drive the screws in so we don't split this. This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, when I was growing up, my mom was a marriage and family therapist, and she got to help lots of different people through lots of different stuff, big and small, and that's really what therapy is about. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't have access to therapy near them, or they just don't know where to start to find it. That's where BetterHelp comes in. Basically, you go to the website and you fill out a little questionnaire, and it answers questions about who you are and what your needs are, whether they are big or small, and then BetterHelp will connect you with a licensed therapist in usually about 48 hours. After that, you can schedule appointments with that therapist whenever works for you and in whatever way works for you, and you can give it a shot. And if you find that that therapist is not a great fit for you, which is possible, you can switch to a different therapist at any time, for any reason, at no cost. You will definitely find somebody that's a good fit for you because they've got a network of over 30,000 licensed therapists with all sorts of specialties. Therapy is a great way to add an objective voice into your life to help you through hard things. Somebody whose sole purpose with you is to help. If that sounds interesting to you at all, you should definitely go check them out. And you can go to betterhelp.com slash ILTMS. That's gonna give you 10% off your first month of therapy. You can hit that link down in the description and go check them out. Big thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I missed a couple of those by pre-measuring, and so I just had to drill them again. It's no big deal, but it reminded me of something a really wise contractor told me one time. He said that his job every day was to cover up the previous day's work. And I thought that was really cool, because, I mean, it's true. You frame something up, and then you cover it in drywall. And then you cover that in mud, and tape, and corner bead, and more mud, and more mud. And then eventually you prime it, and then you cover that in paint. And then you cover that in trim, and cover that in caulk, and cover that in paint. The whole point is every day you get to improve on the thing that you did before. And I think that's really cool, especially when you do something like this and you don't really know what you're doing. Do your best and then tomorrow make it better. Speaking of covering things up, this is called hardboard, I think, or masonite or something like that. But it's smooth on one side, has a texture on the other, it's thin, it's cheap, it's great for things like this that are essentially paneling. So this is gonna get screwed to that ledger from the side, but before we do that, we have to add a bottom ledger to this piece. Let me show you. We've got our top edge here, so we're gonna add one of these along the inside of the bottom edge. I'm gonna put that on with some brad nails and glue because it's not ever gonna need to come off.
It just dawned on me that I don't know how I'm gonna lift this thing up. I mean, it's like over 12 feet long. I don't know how I'm gonna hold it in place to screw it to the ledger. I guess I'll get help. I don't know. Oops. This is gonna get screwed onto the ledger, but I'm just putting in a couple of brads to hold it so that I can come back and screw it in. Now that that's in place, I'm ready to start putting up the big piece on the bottom section, but this is a very wide piece. And it needs to go from here all the way across and attach to this. It's gonna be big and floppy and hard to hold up, but I have an idea. Now eventually when that piece goes up there, it's gonna terminate right here at the edge of this beam, which means it'll be exposed and we're gonna cover it up with a piece of trim. This piece of trim, actually. It's a little bit of a lip that's gonna cover the joint between the two parts, and so we may as well go ahead and put this up there to give me a place to slide the material and support one side of it while I screw in the other side. I've been adding some trim along all these outside edges to kind of hide the seams, and I've got a piece of cove that's gonna go up here to hide the transition to the ceiling. It's gonna make it look a whole lot better, but I still have something else I have to cover up. There's a seam right here between these two panels, and I kind of forgot about the fact that when this stuff is unsupported, it's a little bit floppy. What I should have done is put a piece of wood behind these two so that they were both firmly attached to something to tie them together but I didn't do that. So, I have another solution. I'm gonna take a strip of the same material, probably a little bit thicker than this, and I'm gonna glue it across that seam. I'll do that a couple of times on the full span of this thing, and it'll look like an intentional piece of trim, but really it's just hiding a gap. All right, to be honest, I kind of wish I had just done framing and drywall up there instead of this. I mean, it's gonna be fine, but the big point was to have access on both ends. And I'm gonna leave an access panel on both ends anyway. I could have done that if it were drywalled. Whatever, if I ever decide to take this down, it'll be easy enough, and then I'll do drywall. But for now, let's get this thing painted. All right, a couple of coats of paint on that, and it should theoretically just kind of disappear into the ceiling, which is what I'm going for. So next, we can move on to the LEDs that are gonna wrap the room. Now, I have to be honest, running LED strips around the outside of a room is not really something that I'm that interested in doing, but I did ask my kids what they wanted, and they all agreed they wanted colored LEDs. So, that's what we're gonna do. Now, one of the reasons that I actually don't think it looks great, oftentimes, is because you can actually see the strip on the wall, but I think we can hide it pretty easily. Now to hide these strips, you can buy aluminum channel with a diffusion layer that you slide on top of them. You can get those in flat or on an angle. And I've used those before and they're pretty great, but I wanted to see if I could find something that was even cheaper, like really cheap plastic cheaper. This stuff is actually called J-Channel, and it comes in a 10-foot piece for about $3. This is actually made for drywall. It's a cap that you put on the exposed edge of drywall to kind of dress it up. It's made out of thin white plastic. It's easy to cut, and like I said, it's pretty cheap. Obviously, it's called J-Channel because it's kind of a J-shape, but the cool thing is that you have a short side that you can attach to the wall, and then you have a long side that will kind of act as a barrier going up and then you got a channel where you can lay in the LED strip. So my hope is that this will attach to the wall and just look like a piece of trim that's going around, but then it'll help spread the light up onto the ceiling rather than out into the room if it were just stuck to the walls. Now the only problem here is that it's made of white plastic, which means it will probably let light bleed through it. We can probably get around that, but let's test it out just to be sure. Yeah, so that's what I figured. You can definitely see that through the side, but I think I have an idea. Oh, I also just noticed that it's actually called J Trim, not J Channel. So, you know, look for that. And I could only find this in plastic at Menards locally. The other big stores only had it in metal or paper.
So I put up a section of those LEDs and while my J trim idea did work and did hide the LEDs, it just looked terrible. The LEDs that I got were actually too far apart and so you could see a bright spot for each one of them and that's just really not the look I was going for. So I got these. This is a neon LED strip. It's flexible, it's 50 feet long, and it was cheaper than the first ones I got. Plus, it's super bright. It's gonna work perfectly for what we need. So we're just gonna stick it around the top. Oh, and there's also a little feature that actually reacts when you make noise. So it will be reactive to music. After putting the screws in the wrong place a couple of times, I finally got the screen mounted above my window and it comes down perfectly. It covers up my window so that they can't see it in my office. It's great. Now I did want to point something out. To figure out where to center the projector here, I need to figure out where the center of the screen is. So I'm gonna measure that center and then find the distance from that center point to the wall and then translate that to this wall to find that exact same location right here, theoretically. So the screen is hung and the projector is hung. They're ready to go, except I have to run an HDMI cable from that projector all the way around through this box that I made to the other side of the room. Let's talk about how a professional would do that. Now a professional would take a fish tape, which is like a long metal tape, and they would feed it in through this side all the way down the length of the thing and then hook on a cable or a string to pull back through. And then you could move cables back and forth using that string or that fish tape. But I am not a professional. And to prove that I'm not a professional, I'm going to use a long piece of pink thread attached to a Nerf dart shot by a Nerf gun. Let's we'll see if it works. All right, place your bets now for how many tries it takes me to get all the way to the other end. Ooh, I think it did. <laughs> I did not make it. Let's try again. I'm getting like halfway. That's not cool. Okay, idea number two. Hot Wheels sells remote control Hot Wheel cars, little, really tiny little cars, and I Frankensteined a couple of them together so I have a remote control Land Cruiser. So we're gonna attach the string to this and see if we can just drive it from one end to the other. <laughs> oh, is there something in the way? No. Made it. I feel like that yarn's about to break. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Don't use yarn. And that J trim will actually be handy after all. With some double-sided tape, I can stick it to the wall here and use it as a channel to hide the wires that go across. Now, of course, they do make plastic channels specifically for hiding cables. And I've used it before and it works great, but I already had that on hand and it worked great too. Now, this room is pretty much finished, except we have to make a couch. I'm just kidding. I actually bought a really cheap couch, but I do have to put it together, clean everything and get the room finished. So let's do it. working on this basement on and off for so long that I kind of forgot what it looked like when it started, but I did notice a big change yesterday. My kids were down here hanging out together and playing games for the first time in as long as I can remember. And that was the whole point. I wanted to create a place for us to gather and I hope this video gave you some ideas to do the same in your home. If you got some ideas or you have some suggestions for down here, please leave them down below. I would appreciate it. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for bloopers. Watch. <laughs> I just poked the lens. Sorry. One slick side, so it tanks paint. Per tanks? It tanks paint. Actually, it was cheaper than the.
think that's like the music reactive mode. So as I talk, it's doing a thing. Whoa! <laughs>